All right, so we have with us Seth Luisi from Impulse Gear, and yes. you all just introduced your, is this, is this your inaugural title? This is, yes, this is our first title. We're a small independent developer based in downtown San Francisco, about 15 people, and we've been working on Farpoint for the last year. Working in secret? Working in secret, the best way to work. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the team because you, know, you being a new studio and a small team, I actually pulled uh, from your blog, if, I hope we have it ready, I pulled a picture of your team uh, yes. It's everybody on the team, and it's like it's it's amazing what a small group of people have brought this together. If there's time, if there's time, and they have ready, we'll put it up. But let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the team that you've built, did they? I'm assuming they came from a wide variety of skills. Were most of them video game veterans already? Most of them were either in the mobile space or or some from the AAA space. So you know, we have a good group of people from a lot of different uh, different sections of the. Yeah, and here's industry. your team right here. We have the the photo up of everybody there. I'm I'm assuming that's everybody. That is everyone on the team. Wow. Yes. You know, especially with the YouTube audience, uh, a lot of people are, you know, they feel like one step away from becoming creators themselves. And when we got going with Rooster Teeth and Red vs. Blue, it was before online video was really a thing. You couldn't yes. even watch a video in a web browser. And I think that VR now is the next horizon, you know, the next frontier where people can, it's wide open, people can come in and totally make their mark, uh, especially younger people. What would it take, what would you recommend to some younger person, like, what should they study? What should they get involved with to get on a team like that? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a very common question. And, you know, it's, it is always about, like, determining what you want to do on a project. If it's art, animation, engineering. You know, a lot of these things over the years have become more specialized where before it's, it's not, you know, a, as open as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely we're always looking out for new talent, whether it's artists, animators, engineers, designers. So, yeah, just pick your passion, pick what you're, you're good at, and uh, really focus on that that skill and uh, cultivate it as much as you can. Well, you guys really aimed high with this this title. Yeah, not only are you taking on PlayStation VR, which is a, a new platform essentially, but you're also going to use a new controller type. Correct? That's right. Uh, how do you find working with the PlayStation VR and the new controller? Yeah, so this is something that we've been prototyping for mm -hmm. some time. Um, so it, it's a one-to-one -one direct controller. It's called the PSVR AIM controller. And it's a two-handed controller. So this was really important for our title. We really wanted to get across that sort of core FPS experience. And having something that you hold in two hands that's tracked really adds to the immersion. So mm -hmm. you're able to do things in this game that you just can't do in other shooters. You can come up to cover. You can crouch down just by crouching. You can aim around the cover just by moving the controller controller around and as you move through the environment it just really feels like you're there holding a virtual weapon moving through this uh, this alien world. Is there a force feedback as well because they're just firing the weapon now in the footage that we're watching. Is there yes. like feedback like rumble? On yeah it there, well? are, there is rumble on it so that's one of the other areas we focus on get getting it uh, placed right so you feel that um, and actually I mean when you look at this footage you'll notice there's there's no cursor. Uh -huh. There's no aim assist. We've completely done away with all that. The accuracy that we get with the controller allows us to really have the skill of this game be based on how good you are at aiming. So it's as you know as you would aim in the real life. That's that's what you see in the game. I also want to point out, Seth, is that it also doesn't have any teleporting for movement, which that's right. Commonly in VR games, you'll teleport from one location to the next. Something that Ryan and I when we first started playing VR games, it makes a lot of sense, but we kind of want to see games move beyond it, and it looks like you all have. Yeah, we've done a lot of work over the, the last year and a little before that, just really figuring out what works well in VR for movement. We didn't want to compromise on that. We mm -hmm. wanted to have full control over your character and your movement through the world and the aiming. We felt that that was paramount to our experience. So we do allow you to move through the environment. You play the demo, you know, we've heard nothing but positive things. It feels natural, it doesn't feel uh, bad in any way. And mm -hmm. so you're allowed full movement through the world and that's really a key part of our title. Uh, are you, can you, at this point you say, is it the thumbstick typically that you use for locomotion, locomotion on the controller? or is It, it is. So the uh -huh. uh, PSVR AIM has a, a thumbstick that you can use to move through the environment. Uh -huh. And uh, we've implemented it in a way that's very intuitive. So uh -huh. rather than a lot of these uh, older control schemes, I call them older right. now, but they're actually a lot of them are current. It becomes dated very quickly yeah, as well. Uh, you know, it's because we're in VR, uh, we can no longer have the controls of your character be based on the direction of the controller. So we uh -huh. actually do something fairly unique, which is as you're there in the virtual world, you just push on the stick in the direction you want to go. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter which direction you're facing, how you have the controller held. If, if I want to move in this direction, I just push on the, I'm 
pointing in front of me. Mm -hmm. I just push in the stick in that direction. If I want to move, you know, behind me, I just push the stick in that direction. So it's it kind of breaks that down. You don't have to think about which way you're holding the controller mm -hmm. or which direction your character is facing. You just push on the stick in the direction you want to go, and you'll go in that direction. I have seen a lot of people asking in regards to this and the new controller. Is there a way to play it without the new controller, or is it integrated with that? You will need that peripheral to play the game. You can play with the DualShock 4 as well. We support tracking of the light mm -hmm. bar and to offer a similar experience, but really the preferred way of playing it is with this controller. That really adds to the immersion and the uh, amount of accuracy that you get mm -hmm. when playing it. You know, I have to say, um, I don't know if you've ever uh, demoed games like E3 before in your previous uh, experience in your career, but it seems like it's such a challenge. How do you show the VR immersion that you get on a 2D screen in a big theater or anything like that? So, I mean, is that tough for you guys to do that? It is. We, we've implemented something fairly unique in this, which is uh, basically a spectator mode. So you can set it up, and that's how we captured a lot of the trailer footage. It's mm -hmm. just a LAN client so that uh, you know, on another PS4, we output the full screen resolution. And so somebody can be there holding the controller, moving their head around, and you're going to see exactly what they see uh, just through the spectator view. So can we talk a little bit about the story? I know it's a new IP and there's probably not a lot that you're revealing, but from what I can tell from the trailer, there's a crash landing on an alien planet, and it seems like it's the first time humanity has ever encountered an alien species. Is that fair? Yes. So okay. you are stranded on this alien world, and so your goal there is to really discover what happened to your other teammates, uh, find out what happened to them, and find the means to survive. So finding the equipment, the weapons you need to really survive this hostile planet. And I know that when uh, the, the big movement towards motion gaming with uh, Kinect and the Wii, uh, you know, PlayStation Move, that there had to be design limitations in a way of like shortening the length of the game because of that. Does VR have that same thing where it's a, you design for shorter experiences? Well, that comes up a lot in VR, as you mm -hmm. know, and uh, but we are aiming for a longer experience. So mm -hmm. the, we're looking at three to five hours for the single player experience on this. And uh, yeah, so we're looking at a longer you know, experience. Do you anticipate it'll be broken up into levels or more like an open world design? It is level based. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, we're a small team. So yeah. uh, tackling an open world uh, uh, mm -hmm. with everything else we're doing would be quite challenging. So it is kind of level based, but it is, there's a lot of depth into the levels mm -hmm. that we've been building in, a lot of variety, and, and we're adding in secrets as well. Mm -hmm. And excuse my ignorance, because the PlayStation VR is the system that I'm the least familiar with, the hardware. How does it track the hand movements and how does it track the controllers? Is that with the PlayStation Eye? Yes, so there is, it's actually called the PlayStation camera, I believe, okay. PlayStation 4 camera. So that's used to track both the, the uh, PSVR head-mounted display as well as the uh, PSVR aim controller. Mm -hmm. So both of those are tracked in independently, and again, that allows us, we have a full character, full body, so when you look down, you see your arms, and we're able to track both the gun and the helmet and really show that uh, a high level of movement of mm -hmm. your character in the environment when you're looking around. Mm -hmm. It, you mentioned earlier that actually because of the way you're tracking the, the gun and the headset, you're able to do things, take advantage of things like taking cover behind obstacles and uh, really bounding the hitbox to your physical body. Yes. Uh, is, that, is there going to be a lot of interactions with the environment that uh, VR lets you use in a, a new or different way? There are, and you know we're always trying different things mm -hmm. out and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But we actually have some points where it's like you go through these small little caves and something is about head height mm -hmm. and you have to duck underneath it to get through uh, because it does update your collision and, uh -huh. and, and your ability to move through the world. Um, we're trying not to go too crazy on some of this stuff. One, we want to make sure you're, you're staying in the tracking range. Uh -huh. um, but also, you know, some, some things, this is a whole new way of playing games. And so when we give, give it to somebody that's used to playing it in a traditional way, sometimes Sometimes they don't think, oh, I just need to duck my head down to move under this thing. They, they, they're not grasping those concepts yet. Uh -huh. So it's really exciting of what we're going to be able to do in the future. You have to explain to a, uh, a player who is looking for the crouch button yes. that he is now the crouch button. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, we, we are definitely developing this game for core gamers, and we really want to deliver upon that experience of what we felt people expected from a shooter in VR. And so that's been our main focus. But some people are so ingrained on just the typical dual analog stick controls, uh, if I give this to somebody that doesn't play too many shooters, they instantly get it. It's like, oh, I just aim this thing around, and it's all about how I aim the controller and how I move through the world, and I can duck and I can dodge enemies and, and do all of those things. So these are kind of new concepts that, uh, that the 
you know, people are picking up on, but we're really happy to explore them. And I think that kind of thing, that intuitiveness of VR, opens up these this content to a whole new audience that didn't exist before. People who pick up a controller, to us as gamers, it's like, that's like, you know, part of our bodies at this point. We understand the controls and we can jump into any video game and play. But for a lot of people, they still haven't mastered the mechanic of using two thumbsticks. Yes. And, but I've watched those same people put on a VR headset and it just, the world seems intuitive to them. Yeah, I mean, that's been, we still want a very skill-based game, and it is, as, as I mentioned before, there's no crosshair, there's no aim assist, but it isn't about how you move your thumbs to drive a crosshair around on the screen, or even a keyboard and mouse. It is about just physically aiming at the things you want to shoot, and that is a whole new level of skill that comes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, from looking at the footage as well, there's not really like a HUD or anything on screen. Is there, yes. is most of your information, your feedback coming from looking directly at your suit or say your gun, things like that? Yeah, we tried to incorporate as much of that as possible onto the weapons as mm -hmm. far as ammo and feedback of when it's going to overheat or secondary ammo. So we wanted to build as much of it into the world as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think right now about the only thing we have that's sort of a HUD element mm -hmm. are kind of damage indicators and things like that that are a little more difficult. We don't want to make you look at your yeah. wrist to find out how much health you have. Um, but we are trying to build as much of that into the fiction of the world as possible. Great. Well, can you tell us about when people will be able to experience Farpoint? Yes, it's going to be soon. We haven't uh, announced a release date yet, but we're really excited to get the game done and get it out there and have everyone play it. And obviously, you know, VR was a huge part of Sony's presentation this year. This is a year where VR is moving quickly to the forefront of gaming, and, and you guys are right there in the middle of it. Yeah, it's a place that we really want to be and we're very happy to be. And it's great. It's great to see a team of, you know, 14 people, you know, that are able to produce content that's going to be, you know, right at the forefront of Sony's mm -hmm. next big launch. It's going to be great. Yes. Well, Seth, thank you for joining us and uh, be sure to check out Farpoint. Joel, Adam, 